I'm really pleased to share with you in this the last day of the week of prayer for Christian unity. My plan had been to share with you from St Eugene's Cathedral, but because of the restrictions at the moment and the desire and the order, in fact, to stay at home, I'm sharing with you from my home today. So I'm pleased to welcome you to my home, even if it is virtually. Do you know, in 2019, the Church of Ireland General Synod met here in the city. And one of the main focuses of that synod was about care for God's creation. And I have to say, I was personally very impacted by that because it reminded me, or really told me, that part of being a follower of Jesus Christ, part of being a disciple, was caring for the world that God gives us. And we were challenged at that synod about the personal small steps that we can make in caring for creation and what it meant for us to try and bring influence to bear in the wider world about caring for creation. Today we think about being reconciled with creation and our readings focus on God the Creator and our readings focus on how we can be part of caring for his creation. Our first reading is from Colossians chapter 1 beginning at verse 15. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authority. All things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that everything might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. And then some words from Jesus from Mark chapter 4. Again he said, What shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed you plant in the ground. Yet when it's planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with which such branches that the birds of the air can perch in its shade. The hymn to Christ in the epistle to the Colossians, which we've just read, invites us to sing the praise of God's salvation, which encompasses the entire universe. Through the crucified and risen Christ, a path of reconciliation has been opened up. Creation too is destined for a future of life and peace. With the eyes of faith, we see that the kingdom of God is a reality that is very close, but is still very small, hardly visible, like a mustard seed. However, it is growing. Even in the distress of our world, the spirit of the risen one is at work. And he encourages us to become involved with all people of goodwill, in tirelessly seeking justice and peace and ensuring the earth is once again a home for all creatures. We participate in the work of the Spirit so that creation in all its fullness may continue to praise God. When nature suffers, when human beings are crushed, the Spirit of the risen Christ, far from allowing us to lose heart, invites us to become part of his healing work. The newness of life that Christ brings, however hidden, is a light of hope for many. It is a wellspring of salvation for the whole of creation and contains a joy that comes from beyond ourselves so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete, says Jesus. Do you wish to celebrate the newness of life that Christ gives through his Holy Spirit and let it live in you, among us, in the church, in the world and in all creation? 
Let that be the desire of our heart as the people of God. Let's pray together. Holy, holy, holy God, we thank you for having created us and loved us. We thank you for your presence in us and in creation. May we learn to look upon the world as you look upon it, with love. In the hope of this vision, may we be able to work for a world where justice and peace flourish for the glory of God and of your holy name. Amen. I wonder how some of those thoughts impact us. What we can do to ensure justice and to ensure peace. To be people who live just lives and to be people who are known as peacemakers. And what are the small steps we can do to ensure the integrity of creation and climate justice all around us. Reducing our use of plastics, re reducing, reusing and recycling. All those things that are so important in caring for society and the world around us. So what changes, large or small, could you make which would make the care for creation, God's creation, more effective? Let's take action for climate justice in our own lives. And let's be people who seek to be reconciled to the creation which we enjoy and live in.